I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my life living in Nicaragua. Today, I'm going to be answering Brent's questions about some allegations he's gotten from some other people in his home country about what they think he should be allowed to do with his retirement savings and about the appropriateness of retiring abroad or, in fact, investing abroad or buying products not made in his home country. It's an interesting point because a lot of people make this, and I think there's some important bits we need to dig into. So without further ado, I'm going to jump right into the bump. We're going to get right to it. All right, so let's start by reading. This is from Brent Ox L eight L K. I never know how to pronounce that. All right, Brent, here we go. Your clarifications are excellent. You oh, that's to me. Uh, a question for you to clarify for me and maybe others. Not long ago, when I was sharing plans to most likely spend my retirement years abroad, a friend said they disagreed with spending taxpayer dollars in the form of my Social Security outside the United States. When I corrected him and said that Social Security contributions were from me and my employers, only they remained uh, only they remained unconvinced. Well, unconvinced in what I was saying, still convinced U.S. taxpayers would somehow be footing the bill for my life abroad. Was I correct in my assertions? I know that over the years, Congress has been called upon to fix the Social Security system, but could this rightly be considered as the U.S. taxpayer funding my Social Security payments that I'm soon set to receive? A possibly far out hypothetical, could politicians on the far side of the spectrum use this as a pretense to limit where Social Security is utilized in the future? Thanks for your response. Thanks for your response. Thanks in advance for your response. Okay, so first thing, you're correct. Social Security payments, this is about the U.S., right? Social Security payments are not from the taxpayers. In fact, it is the opposite. You pay into Social Security and taxpayers have been siphoning off money that is yours from Social Security for decades. So it is the opposite. You are actually getting less out of it than you are putting in. And taxpayers in no way are footing, put footing that bill, except in the sense that you are a taxpayer and you footed that bill. It is your retirement money, the same as any other retirement account. So that's the first thing is it is not other taxpayers paying for you. It is you paying for you. So in that same regard, you could say, well, as a taxpayer, you're not okay with him not retiring abroad. It is costly to retire in the United States, and maybe you don't want to support something that the U.S. is doing. It's a hypothetical. So you should have the same opinion that he doesn't have the right to not retire abroad the same as he wants you to have to retire abroad. Does that make sense? If he doesn't agree with that, then he's defeated his own discussion because he's just randomly picking a thing he personally wants out of his apparent hatred of other countries or a really hatred of America. We're going to get to that. Um, and disliking he doesn't like freedom and capitalism and so he's using this as a place to try to say and this is where it gets a little bit offensive as an american he's trying to claim that america should be an authoritative regime like stalinist russia in the 1950s and that you are the property of the state and you shouldn't have a right to spend your money as you see fit because if we started saying that the money you receive whether it's through your social security reimbursement or your salary or anything else we can always tie it back to taxpayers it doesn't matter what you're doing you got a doctor? Well, they got their degree through the American education system. Taxpayer dollars were involved. So that doctor should not be allowed to vacation in Mexico because I, as a taxpayer, don't want him spending his hard-earned money there because, well, I paid taxes that somehow contributed to him. So, And you can make a really good argument for doctors, but let's say you're an engineer. Well, you're designing cars. Oh, but you know, some part of that automotive industry was designed by taxpayer dollars that went to NASA 40 years ago. And as a taxpayer, I don't think those engineers who work for Ford should be allowed to travel to Germany for their holiday, right? You can see where it starts to get to be quite a mess. Basically, what he's saying is he doesn't think that Americans should have the right to travel abroad. But that's not actually what he said. He just said that they shouldn't be allowed to use taxpayer dollars abroad. So in a country like the United States, where Essentially, everything can be tied to taxpayer dollars in some theoretical sense. Most things far more than Social Security. Social Security is actually one of the least attributable to taxpayer dollars of anything you do. Nearly all major industries in the United States have some amount of government control behind the scenes. The U.S. actually leans very heavily towards a planned economy and a heavily regulated one, meaning that it's a lot more like the government-controlled economies of Russia in the 1950s than it is like a free capitalist economy like Nicaragua or China today. That's something that a lot of Americans are shocked by because they're not used to going abroad and seeing open 
capitalist systems. And so they don't necessarily notice when they're in a system where all of the main industries are being funded or controlled to some degree by the government behind the scenes. But there's a lot of U.S. taxpayer dollars going into the system, and that gives the government a lot of control. So if you want to make an argument like that, it ends up applying far more to people's everyday salaries most of the time than it does to their Social Security. And the implications then go pretty crazy once you start saying that, you know, if you want to take it one of two ways, one is that a random taxpayer gets to choose how you're going to spend your money, who chooses who that random taxpayer is, because you have just as much of a taxpayer say as he does. So if he can say you can't travel abroad, why can you not say he's not allowed to live in the United States anymore, right? Doesn't make sense. But if we were to say in a separate context that what he is implying is that you should only be allowed to spend your money inside the country. This implies a bunch of really terrible things, most of which we already said. Basically, he hates freedom and capitalism and everything America is supposed to stand for. But it also makes no sense because inside America, including the U.S. government itself, is constantly sending money to other countries. Now, it may not be as a country traveling abroad because that makes no conceptual sense, but the idea that your retirement shouldn't be spent abroad, uh, where the money for your retirement, I mean, should not be spent abroad, doesn't make any sense because we are constantly buying products made in other countries. So money that is partially or completely coming through the taxpayer system, because in many cases it is the U.S. government doing this spending, we are buying products, everything from uh, you know plastic toys to cars to military products to you name it, software, everything is being purchased from another country. Your iPhone, for example. Are we saying that absolutely no American who in any way receives anything from a taxpayer system should be allowed to buy an iPhone because some part of them is made in China? That's what he's saying. That's the only logical response to what he's trying to claim. So what product could he make? There are no phones made in America. There are basically no computers made completely in America. There's basically no cars completely made in America. What exactly does he think you should be allowed to spend your money on if everything has to be made in America? And how far is he expecting those things to go if you have to pay that super high premium? Because once you're, you, we can say that, yeah, products made in America may be cost competitive in the general sense. But once you start having to carefully eliminate all serious competition and say, oh, you can only buy products that are 100 percent made in America, first of all, you won't have any products. This is a global economy. The idea that you can not spend money abroad simply is nonsensical. So the entire concept means he doesn't know anything about America, freedom, taxes, social security, manufacturing, or just being an adult. But it also means he's coming up with some pretty offensive things. I mean, he's treating you very harshly in a very xenophobic way that's not appropriate. It is not right for any adult to act that way. And certainly it's not someone who's treating you as a friend and not someone who's acting like a good American or a good global citizen. These are really bad feelings that nobody should be having. These are things we have to watch out for, right? These are, these are very scary things for a government to hear because even though he's trying to frame it in a good for the taxpayers' ways. What he's framing is he doesn't believe in the Constitution. He doesn't believe in freedom. He doesn't believe in America as it exists or as it has ever been proposed. And we're not talking about like, there's been, there's plenty of problems with America, but there's things America's pretty good at and he's going after those things in a really hateful way. So that's something to really watch out for. But none of it really makes any sense. But there's another perspective, right? This is 100% your money. And you should be able to retire however you want. What is the purpose of being a worker only to then find out at retirement that, oh, all those years you spent working, that money's not actually yours. That belongs to someone else. You're actually a slave. That's another thing that he's claiming is that you are his property. He's not saying you're the property of the government. He's not saying you're a property of the taxpayers because I'm a taxpayer and I don't, I'm not going to agree with you retiring in the U.S. I'm going to say it right now. I don't think he should be allowed to retire in the U.S. And that I actually mean by making the statement he made. I don't, as a taxpayer, agree with him being free in the U.S. That's a terrible, terrible, I don't want him around other people, right? That's a horribly hateful thing to have said or to have thought, but certainly to have been willing to express is really hurtful. I don't want to have to run into him in public. So if he's going to receive retirement in my country, well, if I, as a taxpayer, had a say, he wouldn't be allowed to stay there. He would have to go somewhere else, hopefully not here, right? So that's uh, an important perspective to have that 
uh, we as taxpayers are not the property of the state and his making a claim that he is personally our owner. Now, I'm not receiving Social Security yet, but I do potentially at some point get paid by taxpayers. And I'll tell you how. I do a lot of technology work for industries such as human medical and veterinary and you name it, that at some point is making money from the government. That means that one way or another, taxpayer dollars are getting to me. Maybe not directly, but they're still getting to me. And so as someone who does work for someone who gets money from the US government sometimes, well, that's taxpayer dollars. And trying to tell me that I'm not free, that I shouldn't have freedom, that I should not be allowed to choose where my money is spent, that I should not be allowed to do things cost effectively or to look after the safety of my family, that those things should not be rights that I have is a horrible thing to say and it's just not okay. So it's this is something I've hear, heard a bit, but mostly I've heard it from Canadians, um, but it is an extreme political position uh, where people are literally pushing to claim, and this is a real ideology out there, but one that the United States has spent a century fighting globally against, is the idea that people are the property of the state and we exist for the sole purpose of serving the state. That the state does not serve the people, that the people are just property. It's 1984 going on and that's not good. So in reality though, as an American, as a American who still wants good things to happen for America, you still want people to be retiring abroad. It just makes sense. Having people retire in the United States actually puts more of a burden, not a large burden, but more of a burden on the American economy than having them retire abroad. There is a reason why the United States government has carefully engineered the tax code to encourage you to retire abroad. They're not just saying you're allowed to because they have to. They're not saying that you can because they want you to have that freedom and they're going to live with you moving away. They're saying, well, actually it'd be kind of nice, not super nice, but a little bit nice if you did retire abroad. So we're going to sweeten the pot by making the tax code encourage you to do so. And that is what they have done. And we've had videos on this before that countries orchestrate their, their taxes and other laws to encourage you. They're, they're not trying to force you to do something, and the U.S. certainly doesn't want to do that. They're carefully tweaking how the tax code is written as one of many pieces of things to encourage people to do different things. They know that if they make it slightly more financial, adv financially advantageous to retire abroad, that a certain number of people are going to do that. But if they only make it slightly financially advantageous, that a certain number of people won't because they want to be close to family. They want to live in the town that they grew up in. They've always had a picture of retiring in Miami on that particular beach, and they're not going to give that up just because it's a little bit cheaper somewhere. Whatever. They know that they can tweak it a little bit more, though, and save a little bit more money by going abroad. And then some of those people who are in Miami are going to say, well, but I could go on to Mexico and save a little bit more money. Or maybe I'll go on to Nicaragua and save a lot more money, right? And they start playing around with those things. So it's all about tweaking the code to get the results that they want. But right now, they still aren't getting as many people to retire abroad as they would like. And so they keep inching up that tax advantage to make it a little bit more attractive uh, for people to go abroad. But they don't tweak it a lot because they don't want to suddenly open the floodgates and have everybody leave. They want to carefully control it in reasonable numbers. And when you have a population the size of the United States, you work with these mathematical st statistics. You don't work with um, a sudden, like you went, oh, one dollar too much and the whole country disappears, right? It doesn't work that way. You have these very large trends and very predictable things and it's incredibly stable as long as you're not doing crazy things. And they're not, so it's very predictable uh, within a very tight margin of error. And so they know that they can encourage a certain number of people, give or take a tiny percentage, uh, to move out of the country versus stay in the country simply based on the tax code. That's what they are doing. So the United States government completely supports what you're doing in every possible sense. They may not like the country that you're going to, and I sense that this is probably what your friend is saying. And we've seen this posted in the community of people saying this about Canadians leaving their country, calling them traitors for wanting to vacation abroad. Think about how crazy that is. Like that's, But that's where North America is heading, that there is starting to be this feeling that so much as being educated, that getting a look at the outside world is considered bad. And that's because people are fearful of the, the ideologies that they have being exposed. Because when people travel, they tend to come back with a very different mindset. And so when people are trying to control others by 
controlling their education, their view, their experiences in the world. Don't go out there. What we have here is the best. And you see this in the United States a lot, right? A lot, America is a big place, so a lot of people don't travel outside of it. They have very little experiences outside of it. So you get a lot of people that will actually repeat that the United States has acceptable health care. That's absolutely crazy to anyone who has traveled outside the United States, but so many people have not, that it almost seems like a plausible thing to say. And people will say it and think they can get away with saying it, as if people who've traveled outside the United States don't don't all know better, but they do. But people say that because they're hoping that they can convince others to never look behind the curtain. Don't look for the wizard behind the curtain. And that's uh, a scary place. But that is what people are encouraging others to do because they want to have this type of control in their ecosystem or they're afraid of what happens when people learn about the outside world. And so they're trying to scare you or threaten you from doing so. Now, it's okay to dislike freedom and capitalism if those aren't things you're into, but that's something he has to acknowledge, that that is where he is. He doesn't believe that the laws of the United States are things to be respected. He thinks you should not obey them. You should disrespect them, right? You should not be given the freedoms that the United States gives out. So it's, a, it's an important perspective to understand that it's not just that he has kind of a point. No, he has no point whatsoever. Every single thing he said is out of dishonesty. Uh, and it's not coming from a good place. He's not doing something to protect his country. He's doing something to harm his country. And if you think about it from that perspective, would it be good for America if we stopped importing all products? No, we couldn't make all kinds of things because we have to import them. Would it be good for anybody if we just completely became isolationist to that point? No, everybody loses. And basically what he's saying is, you know, capitalism, the idea that you pay the least you can to get the most, like you try to make the, like all that he wants out the window. What he wants is traditional Stalin era communism, where the government is in ownership of everything, decides how the economy goes, decides how all the money is spent. And the only thing that you get to decide is, you know, which little stall are you going to to buy your gruel for the day? That is the mentality that he is promoting. And something that uh, while in many ways, we want the freedom in America for people to have crazy ideas like that and promote things that are so against the ideas that allow them to think those things. But they're also things we have to watch out for, because when that kind of ideology goes unchecked, you end up with really, really terrifying results where a small number of people with a large number of weapons start incarcerating the rest of society and keeping them essentially as slaves. That is that is the only reasonable path when you start saying that the money you earn isn't yours, when the choices you make are not really yours, that you have to do what random members of society decide. So it's, a, it's actually a dark topic, right? But it's, a, it's an incredibly dark thing that was done and said. And uh, uh, I think that really the thing you want to do is think about getting out based on that. That, that. that is something you could potentially face. And I'm lucky I never had someone say something like that to me. I would have reacted like this in their face. Um, but then, so your, your possible theoretical further out. Could politicians on the far side of the spectrum use this as a pretense to limit where Social Security is being spent? So in the United States, you do have a risk. There is a very poor rule of law in the United States that is a very loose system, uh, which has always been touted as a benefit that everything is gray and flexible and fungible, and but that does create the opportunity that it is very easy to then simply say they don't need to say, uh, so importantly, could, could politicians use this as a pretense? No, they cannot. It is so ridiculous that even politicians cannot use it as a pretense. What they can do is make it illegal for you to spend your money abroad. They can make it illegal for you to live abroad. They can close the borders and make it unable for you to travel in and out. That would be the complete collapse of society. That would be the end of America. It would not be something you would ever want to go back to a place that was doing that. No one would want to be there. All people there would be prisoners. It would instantly make America a giant, the world's largest prison. That is exactly what it would be. It wouldn't be like a prison. It wouldn't be kind of a prison. The United States would become Palestine on a giant scale. And that is possible. Yes, giant prisons do not survive for long. There's no way. Now, it would be absolutely horrible. You would not do not want to be there when that happens. So the most important thing you want to do is get out. 
right? It doesn't matter whether they have control of your social security or not. You need to be somewhere where you can seek asylum should that ever happen. You do not want to be in a position of being inside the United States and having to find some way to smuggle yourself out through a coyote to get to a place where you can claim asylum after the fact. If you're in that position, your life is not yours. You are in a terrifying position. So should that unlikely circumstance happen, the least of your concerns is where, where, how social security payments are going to be treated. You're going to be worried about your freedom. And so, yes, there is this very far-flung, tiny percentage risk that politicians may decide to close borders, treat Americans as prisoners, all kinds of crazy things. Even the most extreme elements right now in government are not hinting in that direction. That is not something we anticipate, right? That is not something we're actually realistically scared of. But if you're talking about how far could it go, they will never use Social Security as a pretense for that because it would be a completely fabricated, meaningless uh, reason. But they can sit, they don't have to have that, right? They can simply say, you are not free. You can't travel. We can close the borders and all of your income is ours regardless. They can just move your tax rate to 100% and everything is provided by the government. They did this in, in Russia in, in the 1950s, 1960s. These are things that you could see happen in the United States. It's not completely outside the realm of possibility. A lot of the frameworks are there underneath. It would take an awful lot to do it, but it could theoretically happen. So it's all about context. Social security, not an issue. Scary things could happen in America, yeah. But we're getting into the range of conspiracy theories. It's starting to become like really fringe theoretical ideas. I think a lot of bad things could happen in America. You got a lot of crazy political stuff going on right now. It's insanely in unstable politically right now. And you have people like this who are feeling it's emboldened to make unbelievably strong claims like this as if they think Stalin could come to power in America, right? Like, I know that there is some talk of Trump saying he wants to be a dictator, but he doesn't say he wants to be a communist dictator, right? Like there's even, even the strongest, most pro-dictator camps in America don't lean in this direction. So this is an extreme kind of circumstance that you're talking about. Uh, but do these elements exist? Yes. So is there some possibility that they could get somewhere? It, it could happen over time. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that's about the best way we can put it. Sorry, it's not a happy topic for today, but these questions do have to be answered. But what is your best answer to this? It is this simple. Get out. If you fear that people like this are going to be in your ecosystem, that they're going to be people you may encounter in America, which I've never had to worry about that, but some people do, use this as your trigger to get out. If you are feeling like some of these things are real fears you have about America, you have your answer. If you truly believe this is something you have to worry about, What's the question? Get out now. Get out as fast as you can. If that's what you're actually afraid of, get away from that, right? And same thing in Canada. That's what we're hearing. People are scared that the borders are going to close. I don't think that's likely. I can't imagine in that happening. I am not really afraid of that at this time, at least. But if I had that fear, I would be on the plane today. Today. I mean it. I would never take a risk of being trapped in a country. Once those borders close, it is going to be bad in any country anywhere. Right? It doesn't matter where you are, when you can no longer leave your country, when you can no longer spend your money abroad, when you no longer have that level of freedom, you have nothing, right? Because they control everything. So you, if you are having any fears like this, your answer is to get out. It doesn't mean you have to come to Nicaragua, but there are so many free and safe countries in the world. Go to one of them. Keep you and your family safe. Please do not put yourself in a dangerous position because you are convinced that you need to wait it out and see how bad it gets. If you think that it could get that bad, take action and protect yourself while you can. Thank you for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And as always, I will see all of you tomorrow.